You're listening to Rashkin Report. You're listening to WSU, W91.7 FM, The Edge in Whitewater, Wisconsin. This is Rashkin Report, and I'm your host, Yuri Rashkin. I'm excited to welcome to the program Leon Weinstein, a book author and uh, an all-around interesting person. Leon, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure and honor. Well, um, you, you are joining, a, I think, a fairly small club of people uh, from former Soviet Union who are active uh, politically in the United States. Um, yeah. Even though I, I don't know if you've ever ran for office, but you're active politically, you're expressing your political point of view, and you're active in English as well as in Russian. Um, is there, well, first of all, wh what made you feel that uh, getting involved was so important? First of all, uh, I was very much surprised uh, that our co-emigrants who came from the Soviet Union, probably most apolitical group of people, I would think that, um, you know, we, with our experience being uh, uh, Soviet Union citizens and haters of socialism of any kind, we would be very, we will voice our opinion vividly and, and often, but for some reason, uh, most probably because people who lived in the Soviet Union were discouraged uh, and knew that whatever they say will not you know, matter, uh, probably we were taught not to. But I lived in Israel where I become very much active in, in several political movements and I suddenly understood in Israel it's a much smaller country than the United States and every voice counts. So, uh, I, I began to understand that one active person can change minds of hundreds of not active people and bring to the table a lot more than his own voice. And when I uh, came to the United States of America, first I came as uh, I was invited to New York to stage a couple of plays that I wrote and staged in, uh, I had, um, I, I was an artistic director and, and co-producer or co-owner of the Children's Theater of Tel Aviv. And uh, in, in New York, I staged several plays, including uh, Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. And then I was invited to do the same here in Los Angeles, in LATC, Los Angeles Theater Center. So I came here. I loved you know, Los Angeles, loved California, and decided to stay here or decided things, you know, uh, life is a strange thing. So. I decided, uh, and uh, when when I began to see where where my 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 friends my my co immigrants uh, where they gather for political reasons, I found out that no one does that, and more than that, a lot of politicians whom I met during my uh, activities as as theater director and and film director film producer, uh, they were telling me strange thing, but we don't hear voice of your immigration. So I decided to become a voice of my immigration. And uh, at a certain point, I was a member of the Central Committee of the Libertarian Party. And at a certain point, I'm the, I'm the head of the media committee of the same party. I was, at the beginning, I was Democrat and I was Republican. And I, I don't know. I was all over the specter until I found the core, my political beliefs, which are my life beliefs, which probably uh, were summarized 100 years prior to the Jesus Christ uh, by Rabbi Hillel, uh, who said that the essence of the Jewish religion uh, is do not do to others what you don't want them to do to you. Uh, it's a translation, of course. Uh, and I suddenly realized that this is exactly how I would like to live my life. I don't want others to do to me what I don't want them to do to me. <laughs> and I swear not to do to them things that they find hateful or bad for them. So uh, from this moment on, I understood where's the core, what the basis, what's the postament. And from this postament, I began to you know, lecture, write books, uh, give talks, both in English and Russian. And I think that I succeeded. That's interesting. So rather than the golden rule of do unto others as you want them to do unto you, you're going with a, like the opposite. Don't do to others what you don't want them to to you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You're mistaken two things. One, Jesus Christ who said do. hundred years prior to Jesus Christ, Rabbi Hill said do not. So I'm quoting Rabbi Hill because it's much closer to me. I, I would, That's what I'm I saying. Would so your philosophy is, is better expressed that way. Yeah. Don't yeah. do to others. Okay. Yeah. No force. 
Um, another, um, I think, very uh, influential person in American politics, originally from Russia, is uh, writer Anne Rand. Um, and, right. Um, a lot, I think, uh, it, it's a common point of view among Russian immigrants in America to have the that general, uh, what in America would be viewed as a libertarian or right-wing uh, view of the relationship between people and government, what government is supposed to do, and all of those things. Um, do you, do you feel that this is just like a an, is this a, an allergic reaction that people want something the opposite of what they had in Soviet Union, or is this actually looking for something familiar where they prefer a, a strong state and that's what they're used to? And and so you know, do do you see that this is a, how how do you see this? Uh, first of all, most of the people that I know here in Los Angeles, and I know, let's say, between 500 to 700 Russian-speaking people, uh, and I mean, this is the circle that I, I am uh, swimming in. I know probably more people, but in this circle of, let's say, 700, uh, 696 are for Trump and for Republicans. So they are, and they are more libertarians than liberals, much more. Although we don't really care for things like, uh, well, whom you have sex in your own bedroom or, or what you do with your own body. Uh, we don't care if you, uh, decided to commit suicide. It's your right to commit suicide if you are not interfering with my life, of course. Meaning if you are not doing it by, by, uh, hitting with your car, my car. Right. So uh, it, it's your we are libertarians much more and right wing no libertarian meaning liber meaning liberalism. I, I want to distinguish because I think uh, I've confused two things and I think there is libertarian and then there is uh, more republican and and uh, right wing. Uh, okay. And, okay. And it does seem like you said that six hundred ninety six out of the seven hundred Russians are likely to be uh, Trump supporters. Would that qualify as right wing though, or is that now right? mainstream i i wouldn't do that at all i wouldn't it's very hard to consider uh to 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 put a label because we support and i support trump we support trump for very very simple reason uh let's say and i i was i was talking to to i remember one of the you know, another friend of mine who is a billionaire blah 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 and who was trying to explain to me that that uh, the republicans are terrible that uh, trump is terrible that uh, health care is wonderful etc 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 and why i didn't don't like obama it was in obama years so i told him look steve uh let's say that that and he said that you see the, the, the uh, Nasdaq is up, the Dow Jones are up. I said, wonderful. Let's say that we're, we're in the car that, uh, you know, train that running in a certain direction. And the air is wonderful and uh, the water is wonderful and the tea is hot and, and the lady who's serving absolutely knockout gorgeous. The problem is that the train goes to the different direction. Not the direction I want, not to the direction of liberty, but the direction of the government interference with as many things as they can grab, uh, you know, in, in, into their reign. And I don't care if, it means I would love water to be clean, etc., etc. But the most important thing to me is not how the, the trade master, whatever it's called, you know, a conductor, uh, looks, but what direction we're going. How much of this is influenced because you're from Russia? Oh, none. Zero. Zero none. Uh, what, what's important is uh, we do see how countries that centralized government tries to grab a lot of decisions in regards to industry in their hands, how they fail one after another. If you want, your listeners want, I can list about 30 to 40 just off my top of my head, and you too can do that. Uh, we see how countries where people allowed to create things and keep fruits of their labor as much as possible, as much as possible because we do need common uh, defense against crooks and against you know, large crooks from foreign countries. Sometimes crooks from foreign countries are much better than crooks from inside, but that's beside the point right now. So... Uh, when, when we have freedom to create, when we have freedom to share, we have freedom to decide what to do with the money and with the, with everything else that we, uh, earned, that is recipe of 
winning for everyone. Not everyone, not 100%. 100% is never, because some people resist, some people do not want, some people crazy, some, some people... people have weak immune systems. And, and let me go back to the beginning of your question, Ayn Rand. Uh, I, it was an eye-opening reading at that time, but time passed, I cherish her, thinks she's great, etc., etc. I do not like her, her novels, and I found another person whom I think is much more interesting than, than her, uh, Andrew Galambas, uh, another Jew from Hungary, uh, who came here at the same time, he came here a long time ago, he was astrophysicist, and at the same time with Ayn Rand, he began also in California, in Los Angeles, to write his uh, property theories. And this is knockout absolutely science. The first time in my life that I saw, he called it volitional science. I, I saw science in the social political realm. So he died, he got Alzheimer's and died pretty early. So he didn't finish. But it was the whole institute that worked with his ideas. So this is absolutely fantastic. First time that I saw, as I said, logical, like 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 geometry, uh, two plus two is four period, you cannot do anything else, or from this point to this point is the straight line is a shorter distance if we're on the flat surface, period. It's the shortest. So it's it's that type of a science. So Andrew Galambus is much more interesting, in my opinion, than everything else. And I believe that he finally formed, I met with the guy who was chief, a uh, chief lecturer, he was 90 years old at that time. Even we started together write a book. Uh, but he died, 92, and, and the work stopped. Anyhow, uh, that was formed, my opinion. That's why I, I'm not a libertarian per se. I wasn't libertarian party because they were closest. But, but I think that, again, uh, freedom of a person uh, is the, and, and person and, and, and pursuit of happiness is the most important thing that needs to be cherished in the United States of America. And that's what we see right now on the, on the political field of the United States of America. Trump is a champion of that. You're listening to WSUW 91.7 FM, The Edge in Whitewater, Wisconsin. This is Yuri Rashkin. And uh, we are speaking with Leon Weinstein, who is an author, a video blogger, uh, and... Uh, one of those uh, politi- politically active former residents of uh, Israel slash, well, and before then, Soviet Union, uh, who is uh, making quite a difference here. Um, one, um, you know, it, it does seem that even though you're saying that your uh, views are not influenced at all by the fact that you lived in the Soviet Union, I, I honestly have a hard time seeing how wherever we, we come from doesn't influence us in some way. Uh, but here's here's my bigger question. I know that when I when I came from Soviet Union, I, I experienced the same things. I was a child, so not quite maybe the same level as, as you have. Um, but it seemed that uh, the first step that people, when they leave Soviet Union, and they really get sick of government. They want government out of their life. They know that, especially if they're artistic people, if they're creative people, they don't want uh, you know organizational control over their output. They want to create. They want to be themselves. What I think a lot of uh, people sometimes don't get to in the, is the next stage in development, I think, which is that we're so much more powerful and effective when we work together. And yes, of course, in an extreme sense, you can always take it to the, to the extreme and call things socialism, communism, etc. But aren't we as human beings more powerful and effective when we work together? Sure. You know, because I mean, th- to me, that's that's where it starts. Uh, look, oh, you, I <laughs> okay. Uh, let's say that uh, the two views in in the world today are fighting with each other. One is a tribal view, as you're trying to describe right now, that the tribe is more important than the person, and it's another is a... and it's not a requirement, but it is more powerful. I didn't pull any void. The one warrior in the field is not an army. Uh, always history changed by one person. Uh, so I, I, I totally disagree with you that one one person is not a, um, a warrior. But anyhow, there's two views, and I'm not accusing you of being a for any of them. What I'm saying is you're describing 
one view, which is the tribe is more important because it's more powerful. And another one is, uh, no, a person more important. For example, we have... My, my, my house is in the middle of prayers, and this is the direct line for the train to come from point A to point B. And it, the, uh, it's much, much easier, much less expensive uh, to go through my property. But I'm saying, no way. So if your view, or your view that you're describing, is more important, then you come to me, kick me out of the property, and uh, pay me maybe whatever you feel fair, and I go and live in some other place. Uh, my view is go do to yourself what you know you don't want to do to yourself. Uh, but this is my property. Unless I move from here, it's my property. I don't really care or mind if you spend more money. Yes, sorry, you spend more money, but this is my property. Don't touch it. Period. And you know what? One more thing. Uh, when I was in the fifth grade, uh, it was an interesting discussion that I kind of vividly remember until today. Uh, we in the Soviet schools at my era, every Friday for half an hour, they were trying to teach us political, I don't correctness probably, I don't know what it was, but political something, lecture. And this lecture, after the lecture, you know, do you have questions? So one of the boys, you know, raised the head, and he said, uh, "Yeah, I have a question." Uh, my half sister and I and mom and and you know stepdad we live in one room and the stepdad when he comes drunk he beats my mom and we cannot make uh, you know prepare homework and and uh, whom should I speak in order to build a partition partition in order to at least you know be separated from my stepdad beating my mom and the teacher uh, said. Uh, 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 our the whole Soviet Union is attempted to build communism. We don't have time for stupid things like that. Which probably was a stupid answer, but was an essence of the communal thinking. We are building something that we all want. We don't care about you. Yeah, but you're. Trying, I don't. You, want... know, you're, you, you know, th this is what I'm. Con I guess uh, I see is that you are. Uh, arguing against uh, an idea based on its most extreme representation. No, I gave you examples. So you will, you by you, I don't mean only you, sure. but people who watch you, you right? will understand what I mean. It's not the base of my philosophy. That's finally extreme, but good examples of what I mean. All right, uh, Leon, then in that case, we should definitely mention a Kickstarter program that uh, you have launched. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely. Two days ago, we put on the Kickstarter. I hope your audience knows what it is. It's a place where uh, we announce a project, explain what project is, and everyone can come and you know donate five, ten dollars. So if you want ten thousand, we'd appreciate it as well. We uh, we, by we, I mean the group of people, including myself and, for example, a friend of mine. And I, if I am on the right of the center side, he is a left, left, left of the center side. Uh, and he produced in Hollywood about 40 major films and TV productions don't want to start naming because, you know, but not, not, not yet names. Uh, we created a program, a TV show that will allow two teams on stage to fight each other on subjects like immigration, ban on Muslims, uh, you know, relations with Russia, Trump involvement, etc., etc. So uh, w w everyone doing that fighting, right? So but do you mean like compete or do you mean like fists? Um, yeah, I I'll explain in a second. You know, uh, we hear about that all the time. What's the difference? Uh, when you have uh, a, a rally, uh, people you know talking on 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 uh, meetings or whatever, they talk without a position. When we hear talking heads on TV, it's like thirty seconds this one, thirty seconds that one, and slogans are not convincing. We don't have a national dialogue, so we're proposing to have a competition between two groups of people, and we probably will work. Probably we will work with universities, so young people ages from 22 to 30, uh, two teams represent two different parts. First, they represent their idea, seven, their view, seven, eight minutes, then another one. They, under guidance of the judge sitting there, they will 
answer questions of each other, answer questions generally, uh, try to rebuke what, what the other side said. At the end of the show, uh, we'll have the facts checkers telling what they you know, said wrong, what they said right, what facts they gave right, etc., etc. And then after that, we post this show on internet, on YouTube, or other means, and you guys, you, will be the judge. You will decide I mean, who won the You mean me correctly, right? So, so, uh, yeah, 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 you too. You can do it also. But I, by you, I mean audience in in. Inside of the theater, inside of the studio, and also for a week, audience at home will connect, will watch the the show, and will send us a signal either through through email or their phones, whatever. Decide who won the argument, whom you are sided with. This way, every week we will know who won the argument. But the important thing is, you guys will listen to the other side how they see the subject. And you find, you will find a very surprising thing. You will find out that all Americans are not going to, they're not advocating for kidding other people or making other people look, feel, etc. bad. What they're trying to do is to solve the same problems. And the only difference is the way they propose to solve the problems. So in our, in our idea is that it's a healing show, a show that will supposed to heal the nation. Leon, let, let me ask you then uh, one final question that, that uh, you're, you're not 20 to 30 and th- there's going to be a lot of judges, so you're, you're not the judge, but do you feel that you, uh, Leon Weinstein, can be persuaded and change, somebody can change your mind on anything? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Good to hear. <laughs> Leon, thank you so much for being on the program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. You're listening to 91.7 FM, WSUW, in Whitewater, Wisconsin. You're listening to Rashkin Report. <laughs> 